The coolest thing you can ever do in a movie is thread a suppressor on or off of a pistol, because apparently it is a very dramatic, tension-y sort of, holy crap this has a lot of threads. There we go. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we're going to take a look at the Nielsen device, at why you need this special extra thing to make a suppressor work, well to make a semi-auto pistol work with a suppressor, but you only need it sometimes. So if you already know what this Nielsen device is, you probably don't need this video, but there is some cool slow motion video coming up that you might appreciate anyway. Now, uh, in the olden days, so to speak, uh, most suppressed pistols were small caliber, because if you want to get properly good suppression you need a subsonic cartridge. Typically, well before the, the common availability of specially loaded subsonic ammunition, subsonic cartridges were going to be things like 32 caliber, maybe 380 caliber. 22s were commonly suppressed, although sometimes those are subsonic, sometimes they're not, but they fall into this category regardless, because these are calibers which are typically simple blowback actions. So the barrel in there is fixed to the frame of the gun, and the pistol operates simply by the cartridge case essentially acting as a piston, pushing back against the breech face, and in turn the slide, and, and cycling the slide back like that. There's nothing to it, and there's no complication, and if you have a gun with a fixed barrel, you just thread a suppressor on and you're good to go. The problem comes when you try to take a recoil operated handgun and fit a suppressor to it. Now this becomes relevant because in today's world we tend to want to suppress higher velocity cartridges like 9mm. Those are typically recoil operated uh, guns. The vast majority, at least the significant majority, of semi-auto pistols out there use John Browning's recoil operated system, where when you fire the whole slide and barrel move back just a little bit together, the barrel then typically drops, it pivots and rotates down, and then the slide can cycle backward, extract the case, and etc. etc. Et the problem is, in order for that to work, you have a careful balance of weight and velocity that needs to be maintained, because if the, cart the, the cartridge is going to generate a certain amount of pressure on the gun, that needs to be the right amount to cycle the barrel and slide back, and leave the slide with enough velocity that it can extract the empty case, and then overcome the friction of the magazine and, uh, and to push a new cartridge up into the chamber under spring pressure. So you have mass of the slide, you have the, the power of the spring inside, and these, these factors have to balance each other out. This is why early on, before we had uh, pistol optics that were very light, it was not out of the not, not out of the ordinary to put a big pistol dot on a pistol slide and discover that the pistol wouldn't operate reliably, because now you had made the slide, the reciprocating parts, way more, and there wasn't enough energy between the spring and the cartridge uh, to actually cycle the slide. Well, that happens, but to an order of magnitude greater effect with a suppressor, because First off, this is a big heavy thing that we are threading onto the barrel, meaning when the barrel starts to move back all of a sudden it's not just the mass of the barrel itself, it's the barrel plus this whole suppressor. Then on browning tilting barrel guns you've also got the fact that the barrel has to cant downwards, and if you've got a big old weight hanging off the front here, that whole weight has to be cammed upwards, uh, putting a significant extra load on the system that it wasn't designed for. So if you're going to be very deliberate and you only want the pistol to run suppressed, it is typically possible to set up semi-auto browning action pistols with direct thread fixed suppressors and have them reliable, but you're going to have to tinker with the spring weight in the gun, you're generally going to want to go to the lightest possible suppressor, which often means relatively small suppressors, you're going to have to balance it out, and you're going to, like, it's going to be a little bit of a different setup for every can and every gun, even every individual firearm of the same pattern is going to require a little bit of tinkering. So it's a somewhat complicated process, and if you then just take the suppressor off the gun, now if you go shoot it you're going to be beating that gun to death, because it's going to have way more power than it needs, and the slide's going to be moving way too fast. 
the solution to this uh, has been around for at least since World War II, maybe since the 20s, but it was really a guy named Doug Olson working at a company called Qualitech in the early 1980s who sort of perfected and systematized what we know today as the Nielsen device or the recoil booster. And the idea is that it is a way that, that it's a device that allows the barrel to move backwards independently of the suppressor. So with a Nielsen device I can actually pull the suppressor body forward. We'll take a close look at this in just a moment and you'll see it better. But it allows the gun to operate as if, well, to operate without having to move the whole mass of this suppressor at the same time that it's trying to cycle. And it allows you to have a drop-on reliable suppressed semi-auto pistol. So let's go take a closer look at how this works. Alright, so what I'm using for the demo here is uh, a Lionheart Vulcan 9, which is pretty cool and one of B&T's new cans. This thing is awesome. This is a Verse 36. It is a modular sort of all-purpose get one can and use it for everything sort of design. And it is going to allow me to get you some range footage where we're going to use the exact same gun, which at the range is actually going to be this Glock with a threaded barrel that is no longer in it, the exact same ammo, which is Fiocchi 115 grain general purpose FMJ, and this can fitted with both a Nielsen device and a direct thread adapter to show you how these to show you these things actually functioning in the real world the idea of the Nielsen device is when you fire a suppressed pistol of course you know the bullets going forward the gas is pushing back on the cartridge case in here but the gas is also pushing forward on the baffles in the suppressor because you've got this expanding amount of gas inside and it's going to put pressure on everything uh, as it expands. So the suppressor kind of wants to push forward. What a Nielsen device does is allows the suppressor to actually move forward. And by having the suppressor move forward you're actually decoupling it from the rearward movement of the barrel. You're essentially allowing the gas to do both jobs at the same time. And that allows the slide to get moving before the mass of the suppressor uh, can start to come backwards. So if we take that off... So this gets threaded onto the base of the suppressor, and then this is a spring-loaded piston that compresses like that. And this it's actually going to go this direction on the gun that we've got set up here. This allows the whole mass of the suppressor attached to this and then locked together by this ring back here. The whole mass of the suppressor gets pushed forward against that spring, thus allowing the slide to go backward. So if we were to take our suppressor here and just put in the direct thread end cap, thread this guy onto our Glock, pretend it has the threaded barrel on there, and give it a try. What we're going to find is that this whole mass is way too much for the Glock to handle because, well, it's designed for this much mass, not for this much mass. And you can see that right here. In fact, that slide barely <laughs> moves at all. That is complete failure to cycle. Now, one cool thing that I can show you with this, because the BNT Verse 36 is a two-part suppressor, you can actually run it as a short version. You can take the end cap off and put it on there, or you can run it as both parts together, give it a little more volume, makes it a little quieter. I actually went ahead and redid this shot with just the back half of the can, moved the front cap on there. Uh, so we've reduced the mass of this moving assembly by this much. And you can see here the pistol, it still doesn't cycle reliably, but it comes closer. The slide opens a little bit more before the spring overcomes that rearward motion and slams it shut with the fired case still in the chamber. Now if we put the, the entire suppressor back together, so maximum mass of suppressor, I leave the Nielsen device on it, the booster on it, and give that a try, and voila! It opens and cycles and ejects the empty case without me having to do anything to change the slide 
the operating spring, the ammo, nothing at all. That's the beauty of the Nielsen device, is it, it allows you to take a regular unmodified pistol, throw a suppressor on it, and have it run without any problems. And then if you want to have the pistol unsuppressed again, you can just take the can off and you haven't made any permanent modifications, or even any temporary modifications to the gun, because the device is just built into the can itself. So it's a very cool device. Uh, like I said, these were perfected really by a guy named Doug Olson, who's one of the fathers of modern suppressor technology in the United States. Um, there are a couple different ways that these can work that are a little beyond the scope of this video. Essentially, you need a spring-loaded piston and cylinder, and you can actually have either one of them attached to the barrel. So this is one where the piston is threaded to the barrel and the cylinder is attached to the suppressor, but it can actually go the other way around. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, learned something cool, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Oh, one more thing, sorry. It is worth noting there are some 9mm service pistols that are not Browning style tilting barrel recoil actions. There are some other uh, recoil operated pistol designs, like the Beretta 92. Note that the barrel moves back when I pull the slide back. That means it's a recoil operated gun. However, the Beretta doesn't have a rotating or tilting barrel, it has a locking block, a pivoting locking block down there in the action. So the Beretta still would ideally, unless you want to spend the time fine-tuning a suppressor, the Beretta will need a Nielsen device for easy mounting of a suppressor, even though it's not a Browning system. And then we do also have some examples like the HK P9S that are actually delayed blowback. On this guy, the barrel is fixed. It never moves. It is no problem at all to just get an extended barrel, thread it, and direct thread a suppressor to it. When you have guns that are delayed blowback, if the barrel's fixed, there's no need for a Nielsen device at all. That's, well, the same as you would have with a simple blowback 32 or 380 or 22. Um, delayed blowback guns, as far as suppressors are concerned, are no different.